Harami, Chapter 21 I've got some more stuff I want to say, Ashton told us. Haley, I don't care if you record this part. I turned the recorder on. Esteban was sitting on the ledge of the window, watching us. Watching all of us. Holly got up and squeezed in beside him. He moved over a bit, making space for her. Ashton slowly started unwrapping the scarf from around his neck. On one side, we could see finger marks where someone had necked him so hard they had left the reminder of their own hand. I swallowed. There are a bunch of kids who aren't very nice here, Ashton said. The ones that call me Casper and Wonder Bread and Ghost Boy and Pale Face and other names I don't even want to say. Amari looked up and his eyes turned to slits. Who did that to you? Ashton shrugged. Nah, man, tell me, who did that? Yeah, Tiago said. Who did that to you? Some eighth graders, Ashton whispered. I don't know them. They just do it to be stupid, for laughs. You can be stupid and laugh without hitting someone, Amari said. That's messed up. I know. Ashton gently touched his own neck. Not like I can do anything about it. It's just what happens. Like the way kids laugh at us sometimes in the cafeteria, right? We don't care. I care, Holly said. I know I shouldn't, but I do. Me too, Tiago said. I hate it. Yeah, but if we say something, they're just going to laugh harder. Ashton was right. We were different, but most days we believed Miss Laverne when she told us how special we were. How smart, how kind, how beautiful, how tons of successful people had different ways of learning. But some days, it got inside us, like now. Where'd they get you, bruh? Amari asked. Ashton shrugged. Outside the schoolyard, we all got quiet again. You know how in the middle of the yard there's that huge flagpole, Ashton said, and up at the very top there's the flag? He looked at each one of us as we all nodded. Well, on the first day I got here, I stared up at that flag thinking, this is happening all over America. All over America, kids were walking into schoolyards and classrooms, and the American flag was waving. All over America, kids were saying the Pledge of Allegiance, saying indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. All over America, we had memorized this, but did anybody know what it meant? Nah, Amari said, not really, not back then. I didn't either, Ashton said. But it gave us a sameness. I stood in the schoolyard looking up at that flag and I felt something. Not just like a new kid, not just like a white kid, but like I was a part of everybody running and jumping and playing all over America. Not just in our schoolyard. I mean, everywhere. I know, right? Holly said. Like thousands and thousands of kids all over the country got decked out in their new school clothes and were all excited for their first day of school. Yeah, Ashley said, like that. But on my first day here, almost every kid seemed to be some shade of brown. I'd never seen so many brown and black people. His voice faltered, like he wasn't sure if he was saying it right this time. So many African Americans and Latinos, Tiago said. Don't forget us. Man, you brown, Amari said. He already mentioned you. Light brown, Holly said. Light, 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 light brown. I'm not saying anything to be racist, Ashton said. It's just what I remember. I never even thought about my color till that day. Before I even met you, Amari, it felt like everybody was staring at me. Lucky you, Holly said. How's that lucky? Because every single body in this room, except you, had to think about themselves that way already. Like, way before now. The way you felt like you were in the, on the outside of everything, like you weren't a part of it, that's the way a whole lot of people feel every day. Amari and Esteban nodded. It's true, Tiago said, like the way people sometimes look at you just because I have an accent and like Amari with the guns and like Esteban with his poppy, everybody. Even me, I said, the first thing people see is my hair. Then they see my skin. Then they ask, what are you? Holly said, you got the white pass, Ashton, until now. I hear you, Ashton said, but I never asked for a white pass. You didn't have to, Holly said, but all I can say is welcome home. Ashton looked confused until Holly smiled. You're one of us now. Ashton leaned back in his chair, and slowly he smiled. Yeah, I'm one of us now. Club us, Amari said. The membership requirements are kind of messed up, but whatever. I got a question, though, Tiago said. Why'd your family come all the way here from Connecticut anyway? The one time my family went to Connecticut, it took a whole bunch of hours. It was pretty, but I'm not trying to be driving for that long. And my mom wouldn't let us play video games. She was like, no, we're going to listen to audiobooks for hours. So no fear, Amari said. 
What are you talking about, Holly said. You like to read, Amari. You read all the time, except when you come here. Then you draw. But in class, I always see you with a book. Yeah, I know that. You act like that's news. Then what are you saying? I didn't say anything about reading. I'm telling the brother it's messed up because you can play a video game and listen to a book. You don't just have to stare out the window. Those are two whole different senses. That's what's up, Tiago said. That's what I tried to tell my mom. See, Amari rolled his eyes at Holly. Miss Know-It-All thinks she knows it all. But I'm with Tiago, Amari said. Why'd your peeps come all the way from Connecticut to BK? When my dad lost his job in Connecticut, a friend he knew from college gave him a job managing a key food in Brooklyn. I didn't even know that what I didn't even know what a key food was. I guess there are some in Connecticut, but not where we lived. Welcome to Brooklyn, Amari said. We're glad you landed here. That day, I remember all of us in the art room leaning in toward each other. But what is frozen in my mind, even more than that, is later the same day, Ashton, Amari, Esteban, and Tiago left the school together, walking four across, so close that their shoulders were touching. Me and Holly walked behind them, a double wall against the Neckers who were waiting right outside the schoolyard. Three tall eighth graders who glared at Ashton but walked backward away from the six of us. Three tall eighth graders who looked from Amari to Tiago to Esteban to Ashton that kept looking to me and Holly, then turned and walked quickly, really quickly, away from all of us.